Hey, this is Evan from EC3D. I wanted to show a quick overview of the uh, new Blender plugin for uh, resin base uh, tools and utilities that I created. Uh, so this is Blender. It's a free open source tool. It's wonderful. I love it. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what Blender does here, but essentially what I've done is created this uh, add-on that allows people to work with bases or support-free models for resin printing. So a lot of flat bases uh, like this you know, you can slap them right on the resin plate and they'll print, but it's a bugger to get them off. So people have developed a lot of different ways that can help, including a little bevel on the bottom, um, other options like that, uh, putting them in the freezer to pop them off the build plate, but that's all annoying. So I've developed some tools here to help work with my own models, uh, which tend to be support free. So uh, in Blender, I've imported, this is just a base that I have recently for one of my projects. And you can see it, the add-on over here creates a bases tab, and there's a bunch of options in here. So some of the stuff that I can do are things like a simple bevel. So I click the simple bevel button and it creates a duplicate of the base and you can see the bottom is beveled then to allow you to get a scraper under there to pop it off. Um, that is not additive. You can see that the height is the same. It just uh, went up with the base and then added the bevel. Um, I can do it additively if I want to and I'll explain why you may want to do one or the other in a bit. So you can see now it's the same height, it just added that base in there. Um, and if I look here, you can see it's really nice clean geometry. So that's the base bevel option. Here's a support free mini that I created for one of my future Kickstarters. Um, you can see I can just come in here and do the same options if I wanted to add the bevels. Um, I also have options in here for channel bevels. So this is some new stuff I'm experimenting with to allow uh, printing and resin with a channel built in. And what the channel does is allows resin to flow underneath the base and not have such a large area of suction. So you can see there what happened is uh, it did the similar thing. It created the nice bevel on the base, but it also added this channel in the bottom that allows the resin to flow nicely in there. Um, you can get the corner of your scraper right in here nice to pop this off. Just makes things much easier. So you can see that bevel um, wasn't additive either. It was just... Uh, went up a little bit and kept the height the same. I can do a channel bevel and you can see this is labeled as one inch here. I'll explain that in a minute but there's different types of bevels for different sizes of bases. So um, this takes a minute because it's doing a whole lot of actual stuff here. Um, it's trying to clean up the bottom geometry, make it nice and flat and a lot of fun stuff like that. So you see if I look at the bottom now it's really nice flat geometry. You're not going to have any anything that's going to screw up um, artifacts on the bottom or anything when you do your print. But, you know, I should be able to export this, slap that right on my resin printer now, and have a, a nice easy time getting it off without any elephant's foot, um, without having to fight to stab myself with the scraper to get it off. Um, I did add a convenient STL export button here, so you can click that, browse to wherever you want to go, um, and then click export, and it will export this file as an STL. Um, just to note in Blender here, the manager for objects is over here, and I'm adding something like... Uh, label on here so you know which one is which. Uh, another thing to note, um, if you're working with a larger base, where do I have one here? Import one. So here's a uh, nice large base here, a two inch by three inch one. So um, this this tooling is designed to work for quite a few different types of bases. Um, up to sizes of like three or four inches even. So this is two by three inches. So I'm going to do the channel bevel uh, two plus inch and you'll see what I'm talking about here. This is going to cut into the bottom of the model and when it does larger bases, it does channels um, in more directions. So the one inch base one just had the channel of uh, yeah 90 degrees, but the two inch base plus one will do create channels, um, larger channels too to allow, you know, bigger pieces here while still helping the benefit of the, the, the suction missing. And I could do the larger one on the other base if I wanted to here. You know, it's not going to hurt anything if I want to just do the channel bevel here. There you see, so that it did that. If you're having trouble with the suction, even you can use the larger one on this base. And it's such a short distance, you know, when you're looking at the model on the table, you barely will ever see the bottom, if at all. But that'll make a big difference for the bottom base looking really smooth and coming off the, the print plate. 
Um, and this, so I'm showing you here obviously examples with my own minis. Um, one thing to note here is that the bases are straight on the side here. Um, why you might want to use additive over not additive. So if you look at this specific uh, base here, there's a lot of points. And the blender's not perfect at doing booleans, so if I come up here and I try to do the um, channel bevel here on this one, you'll see it didn't quite work. It did the bevel, but if I look at the geometry, you know, the, it got screwed up here. It's got a bunch of extra faces and stuff in there. So the additive one is almost always going to work um, when the, the interior cut one doesn't. So if I come up here and do the additive channel bevel, it should work fine. You can just see it added a little bit of extra geometry. Um, the nice thing about this compared to trying to do this in a slicer is if you have pieces overhanging off the base or whatever, it's only going to focus on the very bottom. Um, here's a uh, mini from um, Vevictus, uh, which they make some pretty awesome stuff. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you, if you're working with other vendors' models, especially people that work in ZBrush a lot, the bottom geometry ends up being not super clean in many cases. So you can see at the very bottom here, it's rounded. From here, you see it's rounded. Um, it's probably going to be okay when you put on a slicer. It'll be flat. You know, there's a tiny little bevel built in there already. But a lot of this fu this functionality won't work perfectly on here. So I do a lot of stuff in these scripts to try to clean up the bottom, merge geometry where it makes sense, do some dissolving of vertices that don't need to be there. Vertices, excuse me. Uh, but you're working with stuff like this. Often you're going to need to trim the bottom. So there's a few little options in here to do bottom trim. So the small one should usually work. What that's going to do is it's going to trim the bottom of the model just a little bit to try to remove some of that excess geometry and make it nice and flat. So, you can see now if I look at this model after running the bottom trim, see how it's all nice and smooth now? That's going to make this stuff work much better. So then from there I can do the additive um, channel bevel or this regular bevel, whatever I want to do. Um, I just want to show you what would happen here if I had not done this. And all these buttons, by the way, in Blender are set up to be undoable, so you can just Control-Z or Command-Z, and you should be able to uh, be able to undo anything as you're experimenting in Blender here. So I'm running the channel bevel on the original model here just to show you what I'm talking about without trimming the bottom. Um, obviously, there's nothing wrong with this model originally. It'll print fine. The base, base is mostly flat. But you can see here, if I run this, it's ending up with some weird geometry. And this is because the way that this is already beveled down here, when it tries to cut up to take um, some of this space up, it's going to end up with some wonky geometry. I mean, obviously you could print this, but it might look a little weird. So in a case like this, you're going to want to do the additive um, additive bevel. And again, when you looked at the bottom here, you can see, oh, I forgot to undo all the way, so the bottom is fine. Um, but the point there is if you're working with any other bases from any vendors, um, and some of this doesn't seem to be working, or you're not sure if it's nice, um, you can always start with just a bottom trim. That's just going to cut the bottom off nice and smooth for you and be a good kicking off place to do that. So quick bottom trim, and then I can do a quick additive simple bevel as an example here. It's going to duplicate the model, add the bottom piece, and there we go. So these are just some fun tools to help you do this stuff. Um, I and my customers have found in testing that this channeled bevel is really nice. Um, it's going to make for easy to pop off resin prints with no elephant's foot. Um, and whether you're you're creating bases yourself or creating models, you're more than welcome to use this tool set, um, which I'm releasing on GitHub. Hopefully, this is helpful to some people. Thanks.